<laughs> now again, Janet Kuypers. Yay, Janet. John explained to me that I come from a long line of gentrifiers. Whoa. I'm like, what? He's like, well, your dad actually moved out to the middle of nowhere yeah. at the suburb of Chicago. Right. And it is now like, it, it ended up being where like mobsters went to do stuff. Oh, okay. And then it ended up becoming this great place that you have to have at least an acre of land and it's a really expensive community to live in. It, it, her, you know, her, dad, live in. her dad moved out to where the mafia used to hide the bodies after oh, the oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And that's where they used to hide the bodies. Yeah. And you know, where, where the crime is, that's where the artists and, and musicians and stuff go. <laughs> and so there became this little, little thriving art community out in the woods wow. out there. Yeah. And that made it popular for people to move out there, and then <laughs> the mafia made it safe. And, I, and, <laughs> and, uh, and, and the neighborhood I chose in Chicago was yeah. I was a minority in, uh, and careful there. And uh, but I'm a big, strong woman, so I felt fine. And I look there, and I'm like, oh my God, Logan That's Square weird. is becoming gentrified. Yeah. What is this happening? It's because people are spreading out and be like, no, now this is a cool neighborhood to be in. I'm like, okay. If you say so. I guess I was a gentrifier too. Yeah. I, I have no idea. Entirely different stories in this chapter 38, volume 3, the bonus issue edition. It's called Never Did the Same. We've put each other through hell, I know. We've tried each other's patience. We've goaded each other on. We've pissed each other off. We've jerked each other around. But I've noticed two things. One is that whenever you are unhappy, I turn on the charm. I try to make your day. I try to make you laugh. And the other thing that I notice is that you never did the same for me. Mm. Oh, oh. <laughs> May he rest in peace. But I didn't kill him. <laughs> Just so that you know, I didn't kill him. But it's okay. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's right. Oh my gosh. Uh, oh my gosh, that was the funniest thing that became a haiku based on something my husband said. My mom's dad, these are all true. My mom's dad did odd jobs for the mob. My dad's dad poured concrete. Oh. Which is why I called it coincidence. Yeah. They, they didn't know each other, it's just a funny thing. So, and speaking of my parents, this is called cocktail hour. I remember when I was little, when dad would come home from work. Mom would always have two gin martinis ready for them. She put the glasses in the freezer with ice cubes in them an hour before he was due home. That way, their time was, well, that way, their time to sit down together, well, then they could just talk about their day. Sometimes they joke, is it cocktail hour yet? And they'd look at the time, 4.55, close enough. And just so a little vermouth, sometimes, they'd pour a capful of vermouth in, swirl it around the glass with the ice cubes in it, and then pour the extra vermouth out. Uh, uh, uh. I never liked gin. The smell is too strong. But I always think at the end of the day, when I smell a martini, and at restaurants, too, Dad would always order for them two dry martinis on the rocks with a twist. Uh. You know, yeah. some things just flow off your tongue when you hear them and I said enough. Yeah. Two dry martinis yeah. on the rocks with a twist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, another one from storytelling. This is called New All Along. So my friend Joe owned this bar, and Joe was a great guy. He had this thing, though, against guys with motorcycles. He didn't want motorcycles in his parking lot. He didn't like anybody in leather or having motorcycle boots in his bar. So I thought one day to get him for thinking like that. Well, I decided to come up with a plan. It's like this. The bar is laid out with the entrance at one side of the main entrance, so I decided I'd ride a motorcycle through his bar with full leather outfit and a helmet on so he didn't know who it was, and then I'd go through the main entrance and exit at the entrance on the other side. So everybody was in the place. I was in the parking lot, and there was the front door. 
I was ready to go. And then someone opened the door for me. And for some reason, when I went through that front door, I couldn't turn my wheel. And I ended up running right into his jukebox. And so I tried reversing my way out of it, and I ended up running into Jack's cigarette machine. And his wife is behind the bar, screaming for Joe to come out. Joe was in the back and totally missed all of this. While I managed to maneuver my way out of the doors onto the left before Joe ever even saw me there. And Joe put out rewards for information about who did this to his bar, and he swore up and down that about motorcycle riders. And I couldn't tell him that it was just a joke, that I didn't mean to break all of his stuff, right? So finally, after about four years, I told him at a party that it was me. He said, I knew all along. 